What's going on, racers? And thank you for tuning in for another episode of JB Trickle RC. This particular episode was actually a subscriber request episode where we're going to be going over the Hobbywing ESC, how to start it up, how to program it, and uh, how to get to the more advanced settings of the ESC. Um, I've actually got a Hobbywing speed control that I've got to set up for a, a new car. So we're gonna use that for the example of this video. And what we're gonna pretty much do is like for the first time, plug in the battery in for the first time, we're gonna go through the initial step, the, the initial setup, um, get the throttle control set, and I'm gonna show you three different methods of going into the ESC and changing some of the more advanced settings. Um, you can do that with the push button, the program button on the ESC itself, a program box, or one of their latest additions is the actual um, app and a little plug-in module that you can use as well. So we're gonna go over all three of those, kind of show you how they operate, and then I'll let you know which one I prefer, which one I'm gonna use the most of going forward. But guys, with all I've said, let's jump right to it, and I hope you enjoy the episode. All right, guys. So let me go ahead and start off by saying one thing um, that I just realized is unfortunately, I'm only gonna be able to show you two methods. In the intro, I talked about I was gonna be able to show you the touch button method, the program box method, and then the app um, module method. Um, I looked everywhere, guys. I cannot find my old Hobbywing program box anywhere. I probably left it at the track or something like that, let somebody borrow it and completely forgot about it or something of that nature. I'm not sure, so I apologize. Um, but if you want to know about the um, program box method um, in more detail, let me know. I'll maybe do a follow-up whenever I can find mine. Um, but the program box uh, module, uh, or the, excuse me, the program box is a pretty straightforward um, example too. You just plug it in the ESC, you're going to run the power to it, and the program box just has a digital display. It's nothing fancy. Um, and uh, you just go through and, and hit a few keys on it and you can set your programs that way. Um, but I am going to show you the touch button method, the, or excuse me, I'm going to show you the initial startup method, the touch button method, and then the uh, module with the app method. Uh, this right here is my new preferred method. So even if I don't find my old program box, I'm not too worried about it. I really like this right here. So uh, with that said, let's go ahead and get right to it. I've already got my radio on. I've got my battery plugged in. Um, the power is not to the ESC. First thing you want to do, especially if it's a brand new model, um, is you want to make sure that your receiver is bound to your radio. Okay, That's uh, ultra important if it's a new model. Sometimes you need to restart the ESC. The binding process is already done. Um, I've already went through the binding process for this. So it's already programmed. So now we're actually going to be able to uh, do the actual programming, initial program for the ESC. Now, the first thing I want you to see is we have this little red programming button, and I do want to say this is the new Hobbywing Just Stock, zero timing, the next gen, or I should say current gen, okay? And the difference between this one and the other one, I'm sure there's other details, but you've actually got a little program port right here as well. So what we're going to do is to get this process started is we're going to hold that little red program button down, and we're going to turn the power on. Then you're going to hear the beeping. So now we're ready. We're going to press that little red button again. It's hard to see because of that wire, guys. We're going to have to do, have to do this two hands or one-handed. Press it once for neutral position. And now what we're going to do is make sure your end points on your radio for your throttle is at 100%. Okay? Now what I'm going to do to set the throttle is I'm going to hold the throttle down, press the red button. You get two beeps. And now I'm going to Throw my trigger all the way forward for brake, reverse, and hit the button again. Now you got three beats. What does that mean? The initial setup is done, okay? Now I'm gonna have throttle, okay? It's not rotating yet because I actually do not have a pinion gear on my car yet, but you can hear it. And then the back is brake, and you can see it on my display too, okay? Throttle, let me get a better angle here and then brake, okay, and you can hear it in the car. So the initial setup has been done. Okay, so we have, the, the, the ESC has been tuned. We're, what, what's the settings, right? Well, if you look at your user manual for the Hobbywing, now that we have the basic setup done, on this sheet here, if you look here, it's gonna say those black background with white text options are the factory default settings. 
So this is what we currently have. We have Ford with brake. We have 25% drag brake force. Um, we've got our um, BEC voltage set, neutral range set. Um, let's see here, drag brake force 10%, maximum brake force 100%. Um, then your option fives are like your lipo cutoffs and stuff like that, I do believe. Yeah, voltage cutoff. So, and then our start mode punch at level seven. So these are our default settings, okay? So at this point, we can cut the ESC off because the initial programming is done. And now we're gonna look into the touch button programming. All right, guys, so for the push button program method, okay, everything's off again. But what you gotta do is, again, is follow the manual, and I'm gonna go through the first stage of this program, okay? I don't like this method. I don't like the push button program method. I've done it in the past. It can be a little bit of a pain, and here's why. It's a lot harder to verify that your program and what you selected is accurate because the way you got to go through the menu and you got to go from program option one to two, so on and so forth with clicks and the sounds and the number of flashes and so on and so forth. And the directions can be a bit, uh, a bit confusing in that area. But we're going to go over the first stage anyway, just to get that set. So what the manual says to do is hold down that red button, power it up, and we're going to wait for that red light to stop and it's going to flash green one time. Boom. All right, so I'm gonna let off. It flashed one time and then I let off the set button. And now the light's gonna flash. It's three times, flashing three times. That's telling me where the current program is set for stage one. Stage one is the running mode. The running mode is forward with brake, forward, reverse with brake, forward and reverse, so on and so forth. So if I wanna change the current setting from three, we're gonna hit that red button again. So now it's beeping one time. One time is forward with brake. If I hit the button again, it's gonna beep two times. What that is, is that is um, forward, reverse, and brake, okay? So now if I wanted to keep that, you can turn it off and back on. Your ESC is ready to use, okay? So the easiest way to double check that now is we're gonna hold that button down, we're gonna flip the switch, and we're gonna wait for that green light to hit again. One time, boom, let off. See? All right, it is beeping twice. And if we wanna change that again, let's just say we wanna just forward a break. We're gonna hit it again, that's three times, hit it again, should be one time. So we're gonna turn that off. And to verify that that change that you wanted may have took, we're gonna hold down that little red button again, flip it on. We're gonna wait on the beeping to stop, go to green, let go. See, so it's beeping one time. So we know that that program that we wanted took. So that's what I mean by it can be a little bit confusing. You gotta follow the, uh, the directions very closely with that. So again, I'm not a big fan of that. I don't wanna go through the whole programming method because it's honestly quite a bit of a pain in the butt, but we're gonna go ahead and try to do that anyway. Hold it down. Okay, so it's beeping. It's gonna to go to green, beep one time. Boop, two times, let go. Okay, now what I did whenever I let go and it beat two times, we're now in like the drag force menu item. And the same thing as earlier. You can hit that red button it's beeping two times, that, that means currently it's set at 5%. That's three times. That's four times. One, two, three, four. So at four times, that would be at 20%. At one, per, at one beat, right there, that's zero drag brake force. So we're gonna turn it off again. And that's gonna hold the program, okay? So that's how you kind of menu and go through the, uh, the, uh, the menu items here. Again, it's kind of a pain in the butt. It's not my preference. So now what I'm gonna do is get set up again and I'm gonna show you this method. All right, guys, so here's what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna show you my favorite method and in my opinion, the easiest method. Again, I apologize, I'm not able to show you the old uh, Hobbywing program box. 
because uh, I can't find mine. So I, I apologize, I can't do that. But if you're interested in getting that, um, because I believe that will cost a little less than this version here, the, the app-driven module, um, it's still straightforward, uh, super easy to use. But what I like about the module and the app, you got a little bit nicer display, touch button, so on and so forth, a little bit faster too. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is, once again, we wanna turn our radio on. And I've already got this uh, module plugged in, but I do, I'm do. i gonna take it back out real quick because I do wanna show you there is markings to show you. And it's gonna be real hard to see here, guys. You're probably not gonna be able to see it clearly, but it does have a uh, marking so you can match it up properly. So we're gonna go ahead and get that plugged back in. And then we're gonna power this thing up and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to program with this thing. And this is why this is my favorite method now. Um, this will be the second or third car I've programmed with this so far. So we have the module in, I'm gonna turn it this way and we're gonna go ahead and power on the car again. And you can see the light comes on. Here's where it's super easy, okay? You pull out your phone, you're gonna download the Hobbywing um, uh, program, ESC programming app. It tells you the directions exactly which app to download. And here's your home screen, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we are going to go to link. It's gonna look for available devices. It's gonna pick up on the ESC that we have it plugged into. So I'm gonna click that, module connecting, and now it's gonna show that link is gonna to change to blue. That means it's linked. So now we can click on parameters. Information's loading. Parameters loading. And here we go. I've already named this ESC because I did have it open uh, earlier to JBVTA. It would normally just have a bunch of uh, like random numbers, the generic uh, coding the way it came from Hobby Wing. So that's cool. You can change the ESC and name it. Um, my other ESCs and some of the other cars I've programmed is named as well. But here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how convenient this is. These are the settings that we left with and already moved it around a little bit with, uh, earlier and made a couple changes. So if it looks different from the push button method, that's why. So here's what we're gonna do here. Running mode, forward, reverse, with brake. I'm gonna click that. I want forward only with brake. I hope you can see that clearly, guys. So I'm gonna click that, forward only with brake. Punch level, uh, factory setting, yeah, there we go. It's got an asterisk beside it, it's normally seven. So we're gonna select that, we're gonna hit okay. Then I'm gonna click save. Yes, I wanna save the parameters. You have saved successfully, so we're gonna back out of the app. You want to double check your parameters, you click on parameters again. Forward only with brake. Punch level, level seven. Well, I like to go ahead and go to nine. Like I said, I already had it preset, but that's okay. And I haven't ran a touring car in about 15 years, so I'm gonna give myself a little bit of help, and I'm gonna go ahead and do forward, reverse, with brake, okay? That's what we're gonna set. I may change it later, so on and so forth. Uh, you can change your low voltage cutoff. You can change your uh, maximum brake force. I'm leaving it to, uh, at 100% and then I'll dial it in with my radio settings. But I do have drag brake force. It normally, I want to say, yeah, 10% is the default. I got that at zero. Let's see here, maximum reverse force, 25%. I'm gonna leave it there. Um, for now, let's see here. Drag brake force. Um, I'm, I can't remember. I want to. I can't remember if it's at zero or twenty percent or whatever. I don't know. But I'm going to turn it to zero um, percent, and we're going to leave it there for now. A couple other changes. We're going to change it to say yes. So again, we can back out. If you want to make sure your parameters saved, you can click back on parameters again and go back and review the changes you made. So now you can see running mode, forward, reverse with brake, um, punch, level nine, a couple of the other changes, it's still there, okay? So that's the cool thing. Now, if you want to double check that everything's cleared, if you're like me, you want to check, check, and double check, we can just go ahead and close all that out. We're going to restart the Hobbywing app, let it open. We're going to turn it back on. We're gonna link it, let it search for available devices. Right there, module connecting. Click on parameters again, ESC is connecting. Information loading, parameters loading. And boom, it's gonna open up. And then you can verify everything's still the same. Running mode, forward, reverse with brake, our punch level nine. Um, the initial brake force, zero, uh, low voltage cutoff, we didn't change that, drag. So all that stuff stayed the same, so we can verify that all that stayed the way that we want it to. This is the reason this is my favorite programming method for your advanced settings, and it gets even better. 
This will work. It doesn't matter if you've got the just stock, the current gen just stock. Again, guys, if you've got an older just stock and you want to try the wire harness that this thing came with, um, for the older versions, you might want to just double check and verify that it will work with those. I can't verify that for you because I don't have the older version anymore. All my cars are now running the current next gen, new gen, whatever you want to call it, Hobby Wing Just Stocks, or the current XR10 Pros in my drag car. Uh, but what I was getting at there is, is you can do the Just Stocks with this, and if you're doing an XR10 Pro for drag where you got to go in, you want to tune on like the turbo functions, the uh, timing functions and all that, it will have all those functions in there for that ESC that you can tune on as well. That's the benefit of this. Super easy, nice legible dis uh, display screen, super easy to verify that any changes that you made did take. This is my preferred method. And so I highly recommend if you're into racing, you might want to get one of these where you can change it on the fly and verify your changes are what you wanted in a much easier process. So that pretty much sums it up for this, guys. Um, we're going to go ahead and power this thing off. I can unplug my module. Everything is done for now. Unplug my battery, put this back in my LiPo bag, and turn off my radio. Guys, I really do hope that this video was helpful to some of you guys, especially the ones that put in the request for this video. Um, I hope that uh, my explanation was was uh, user friendly, and again, the touch button method it can be done, but yeah, it's it's a little bit bigger pain in the butt, um, just for verification purposes, having to follow the number of beeps, number of flashes, color of flashes, so on and so forth. This is a lot easier. If you'd like to pick one of these up, I'm going to show you the uh, case here. It is the Hobbywing OTA Programmer. I'm going to flip that over there, and hopefully you can see that um, part number there. This is what you're looking for. Super convenient and awesome. But guys, again, I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Again, hope that uh, you you, uh, you found this helpful, especially those that requested the video. Greatly appreciate the support, guys. Please, if you just stumbled across this channel and you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button, hitting that like button, hit that bell icon to get notified of my future uploads. And again, I appreciate each and every one of you, and we'll catch you guys on the next episode.